And funny thing was that, um, you know, I've, I've read quite a few obituaries from the Polish newspapers uh, from when he died. He died in 32, 1932. Uh, and they all mention his connection with Constance and with Ireland. They all mention his work in the theatre. But none of them mention those pictures, those two pictures. So I don't know if there's something political a reason why that would be. I'm not sure, but not mentioned. Is there any direct descendants from that son? I don't think so, but I'm not 100% sure. I know he himself died or ended up in um, California, Stanislav. Uh, and the last thing I saw was he wrote to the Irish Times um, in the 60s, sort of 68 or something like that, uh, trying to find paintings, his father's paintings, uh, hoping to organize uh, an exhibition in California. But nothing came of it. I don't think he, he got any sort of replies. And that was a curious thing because he listed pictures that he thought were in Ireland. Um, and uh, some of them, in fact, have found, you know, some of them are the ones that we've seen tonight. But you said there's still a lot of paintings. Well, there must be. I mean, he, he, there must be. If you, if you exhibit it over 100, well, they have to be somewhere. Well, there's the one in the arts club, the giant. Yeah, the that's, the, uh, that's the Duncan. That's the Duncan. Yeah. Duncan. That's the one they have there, yeah. Oh, did you? All right. You always sign them as well, didn't you? Not always, no, not always. And uh, very different signatures are different nearly on every one of them. Right. Very confusing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Patrick, could you say something about the cot they had in the Dublin Mountains that we went to see? Or could you ask a question about it? The relevance of the, the cottage in the Dublin Mountains that we went to see? Well, this is the cottage that's the she used to stay in. I don't know whether Casimir had much connection with it. But that's where she found all these magazines and things and got interested in nationalism. And yeah. Yeah. But I don't know anything further, really, as such, rather than, other than that. Well, Bart, it's, it's in a sad state now. Is it's, it? It's a ruin. The daughter, Maeve. Very sort of sad, actually, the whole story with Maeve, because um, Constance really didn't have anything to do with her whole upbringing. Um, she left her, she left her in the, in, with the grandmother, and that was more or less it. Um, and then on top of it, because she was brought up with the grand, by the grandmother, whereas she may have, in ordinary circumstances, she might have been kind of uh, proud of her mother's, you know, revolutionary activities and all that. But because she was brought up in sort of, you know, uh, Anglo-Irish uh, family like that, uh, she was brought up to, to, to hate all that, in fact, and to uh, be embarrassed of her, about her mother. And, you know, there was no, there was, doesn't seem to be any love there. In fact, when she, when she died, um, there was some scene where she may have tore up uh, letters and things like that, which... You know, doesn't show any great, you know, love or whatever. So it's kind of sad. And she didn't marry and she didn't have kids. You didn't mention what happened to him. He said 1927, she died. What yeah, to him? 1932, he died. Right. So he continued on. He, he was working in the American consulate right till 1932. And then he died there. Uh, but I mean, all of that period, I mean, he, he, his, uh, even though he couldn't direct his own plays, he was writing them. And um, he, his, his plays were also being staged. They were being staged in Warsaw, in Poznan, and um, in Vilna, in those cities, by other people, you know. So they were clearly popular, popular works. And oh, I didn't mention that, the uh, Yeats thing. Why Yeats yeah, didn't yeah, like him. Yeah. Yeats didn't like him, and Lady De Gregory didn't like him, because he, initially they, start, they were uh, renting out the, the Abbey, for their plays, which were comedies. And Yeats apparently said that, uh, well, he apparently disapproved of uh, the Abbey being used for mere entertainment. That was the main grudge there, you know, so. You mentioned he wrote novels as well. I think one of them was set in Ireland. That's right, yeah. Uh, uh, what is it? Power of Flesh and Blood, I think it would be. So much something like that, so that would possibly be the, uh, the uh, translation. 
and I presume, well, I haven't read it, so I don't, I'm not sure, I haven't even found a copy of it yet. Yes, he wrote those in English and the ones in Poland in Polish. In Poland. Yeah, yeah. So I have a list of all those plays, so I might give it to you and, you know, to, to keep if anybody's sort of interested. It's the, the list of plays that he did in both here and in Poland. Were they ever revived? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe in Poland, but I'm not, I, I haven't found that, oh. you know. I, I, ass I assume that they were kind of, um, kind of topical, you know, or of the moment and that they possibly didn't lend themselves to being, you know, uh, revived. I'm not sure. It's surprising there hasn't been a biography of them because there are, there are so many biographies of so many people that less would be able to. Well, he was sort of hopping around so much, it's h hard to kind of keep track of wh where he was and that kind of thing. And then all the various wars, etc. So families dispersed and if you know and then of course there was the whole issue about the uh, you so you asked about Maeve she inherited the paintings that were in the house so bread would have been one of them yes you know and that was that was there that was there and um, he uh, that was another strange thing that uh, he, uh, mm, when uh, Constance died in 27, after that, her, uh, I suppose, it, what was it? Oh, I know what it was. It was when, um, when her, uh, when she died, the, the, the content, whatever contents she had, well, she had no money, but she did have paintings and furniture and no, I think Cons uh, Maeve got it, but Maeve was living in England at this stage because when her grandmother died, the grandmother led, left all the money not to Constance but to Maeve. And so Maeve sold that house, bought one in England and somehow got the paintings, whatever they were from, from, uh, from the house, were sent to England. And her, the executress of Constance, which was, I think it was Hannah Sheehy she she Skeffington, I, I think I'm right on that. Um, she was a sort of uh, very involved in the suffragette movement and she was a sort of a colleague, I suppose, of Constance's. And she was very upset when Maeve was trying to remove all the paintings to England because she felt that some of those paintings were cashmere's. And she wrote to him, well, we're not 100% sure she wrote to him. Well, we are actually, because she wrote to Maeve saying, Kazimierz has sent a telegram saying, do not take the paintings. But then, a few years later, Stanislav writes a letter saying he thinks Maeve, Maeve has all those paintings. Mm -hmm. What about the relationship with father then, Maeve, who was not... Doesn't seem to have been great either. Well, which, which, well <laughs> yes, <themselves>. yeah, <laughs> that's a sort of a kind of a... a grim sort of passage in the whole thing. I... Uh, and... I can't quite work it out, but he seems to have had a very good relationship with his own with his own son, which would mean that he had sort of paternal instincts. However, however, Stanislav did write. Uh, there is a letter in existence to one of his friends in Ireland from England, from when he was in America, writing that his, his about the two of them, about his parents, he calls them very beautiful, very talented, but very irresponsible parents. <laughs> So he loved them very much, but I don't think Maeve, because he, Maeve would have been influenced by the grandmother a lot, you know. But I, I do wonder why he didn't make an effort to see Maeve. I don't understand that. It is strange, because obviously Constance was very het up or caught up in her activities, but it's strange. I've no real answer for that. I just think that it would make a great project between Poland and Ireland to put on an exhibition of both the paintings. Yeah. Whatever could be found between Poland and Ireland. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can try. It's, it's, it's a funny, though, when, you know, the normal method of doing that is to sort of put a letter in the paper or whatever. But I'm just thinking if, how is it is that in the 60s, when this would have been more recent, 
uh, Stanislav got no, react no joy at all from his letter in the Irish Times. Nobody came forward. Maybe now they might because there might be money involved and they might think it's sort of... Life wasn't easy at the time. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, maybe now there's a better, a better chance and uh, people might be more kind of aware of what they have on their own walls and willing to share it. <laughs> the sheds, I'm maybe. more interested in the Polish Irish connection now as well. Mm, yeah. The last few years. So hopefully something can be done. Okay, thanks very much for that one. Thanks. It's really fascinating. Mm.